Hello beautiful people and welcome to another video. I've got a really cool table for you today. This is a mid-century Moroccan coffee table. It has a very cool base that unfolds like this. It does have some major damage that I'll need to address. There's a large chunk missing and some little bits here and there. And this big brass top which is in a really rough shape but that's why I'm working on it. So the reason I'm working on this coffee table is because of a challenge that I'm doing with Anders from Mid-Century Flipper. I don't normally do mid-century modern stuff and this is not your typical mid-century modern but I think it's pretty close. My project has a spin on mid-century modern because this is Moroccan which is not something that you typically see. So the idea is that I'm gonna do this, which Anders has picked for me. He found this on Facebook Marketplace and I just went to pick it up. And he's gonna do a really interesting piece that I found for him. He lives in Sweden, so I couldn't do it personally, but I found it on Facebook Marketplace and he went to collect it. Hi Jay, I just want to thank you for the furniture that you picked for me. It's really, really different. It's really, really green and let's see what I can do with it. And I hope you enjoy and like the furniture that I picked for you. I think you're gonna do um, wonders with it. So uh, good luck. He gave it a nickname Kermit. So that might give you an idea. I'll put a link to his video at the end of this one so you can see what I picked for him. This is just a friendly challenge and we just basically want to do something we don't normally do. If you guys enjoy his videos, give him a like and say hi from me. I know he will appreciate it greatly. All right, let's see what we've got here. I don't know if I want to disassemble the whole thing because sometimes it's just better not to. I'm pretty sure those screws are completely stuck. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's gonna be a huge pain to get these screws out. So I think I'm just gonna leave them in and I'll just polish them in place. I think I'm gonna scrape it. I did not expect that this wood would be so light. I think I'm just gonna try to sand this stain and varnish off. The good thing about this design is that these are all flat surfaces, so I can just use my sander. I'm purposely using 180 sandpaper so I can also sand over the brass and remove those deep scratches and get it ready for polishing. But yeah, I did not expect this wood color and it looks like there is a lot of wood filler as well. I think that's what it is. I'm gonna need to research this type of wood. Maybe this is something typical for Morocco, if this is actually from Morocco. It's a really beautiful grain. The problem is that someone's made lots of repairs, so if I do keep it natural, I'll need to think of a way to hide all these. This looks like wood filler. So this is the big piece of wood missing. And I was actually worried that I wouldn't be able to find anything to match the color, but now that the stain is removed, it's actually a completely different type of wood, so I might have something similar. This was all filled with wood filler and stained on top of that, and I think the wood filler just fell out. The color didn't match at all, so I need to fix this anyway. There's wood filler literally everywhere, so no wonder someone stained it just to cover it up, but this is definitely hardwood, but it looks like it might be brittle as well. 
so I think that's why there are just so many little cracks and so I'm just gonna strip this whole thing and we'll go from there. I must say that it's so refreshing to actually work on a piece of solid wood. So I don't need to worry about sanding through the veneer. And now I need to do all these, but I think I'm gonna do this by hand, just because these are curved and it's gonna be safer. Even though this is 120 grit, it still leaves a pretty nice brushed brass surface. I'll go with a higher grit and actually might not polish it, but just leave it like this. Probably go up to 220 and it should look pretty nice. So this is from the Orbital Sander. And as you can see, there's lots of scratches in all directions. And that's what happens when you sand it in one direction, even with 120 grit on brass. I'm done sanding most of it. I guess there's more. <laughs> That's the thing about doing tables or chairs. There's just so many different angles and surfaces. So I just need to do this bit and inside. And I'm done. So now I'm basically marking the area that I'm going to remove with my router and make space for a replacement piece of wood. I tried to follow the line and basically make it as straight as possible. It was difficult to attach some sort of guide rail or anything like that, so I freehanded it, but then I used a chisel to make the line straight. So the board that I found that was the closest match to the missing bit of wood, this is what it looked like and I basically just found the area on the board that in my opinion was the best match and I cut it to size and glued it in place. And I'm not sure if this makes sense but the way I actually cut this piece is so all the sides were not quite vertical but were actually angled towards the bottom so then when I put it in place and I clamped it in um, there would be even smaller gap or no gap at all. So I purposely made it a very tight fit and I also mixed the glue that I used to glue it in with some of the sawdust 
and there was no visible gap and I was very happy with the fit. So now because this is a different species of wood and it has a different grain pattern I need to be creative and try to match it. So yesterday as the last thing that I did was this repair. This wood obviously isn't a perfect match but this was the closest I could find. I removed most of the wood with a saw and then I finished it off with a chisel. To do something like this you need to make sure that your chisel is very sharp. So this is what it looks like. Obviously it's not the same color but that's the best match I could do. But I'm happy because it's really tight, there's no gaps. And it's much stronger now. And now the tricky part. I basically used those markers to try and extend the wood grain pattern that was on the leg onto the repaired piece and there is just not a right or wrong way of doing it and I can't really draw so I just did my best. I'm gonna try a little bit of this water-based stain and see if I can blend this piece with the rest. I want to see if I can get this color a little more brown. So now that I have repaired this little piece of missing wood, wherever it is, here, it actually looks very nice. And it's not that easy to spot, so I'm quite pleased with that. So I just did a little more sanding with a sanding sponge just to make it nice and smooth and ready for the finish. Because I didn't want to take the legs apart I basically polished the hinges in place and I just used a small wire brush, this was a brass wire brush, just to make sure that I wouldn't scratch the hinges too much and it did the trick. thousand years later. I think I'm done with the base. I'm gonna give it a clean with mineral spirit or white spirit, whatever you call it in your country. And I'll let it dry before I come back and apply a stain or finish. I haven't decided yet. You didn't think I was just gonna keep working without a mandatory cut break, did you? When you apply mineral spirit or white spirit, it also gives you an idea what the wood is going to look like with the finish on. And also if you have any imperfections, any scratches, you will be able to see them better. So you can sand it before you apply the finish. While well, you still can. So this wood is beautiful. I don't think I'm going to stain it because I really like the grain. I'll just focus on trying to fix all the imperfections and try to cover the old wood filler. I'm gonna try something I haven't actually tried before. I have all this oil, but it's a type that darkens the wood with time. So we'll see how that goes. 
If you guys know what type of wood this is, just put it in the comments, I'm curious. And how beautiful is this against the brass? This base is really cool. Not only it looks beautiful, it's also very practical because it's you can fold it flat and if you need to transport the table it's very easy. This is huge. <laughs> this is gonna be a lot of polishing. Oh, I don't even know what's the best way to do it because I've never done anything this big. So this is my plan. I'm gonna try Brussels. I never really used this. I know what it is and I know how it works. I'm gonna try steel wool just because how rough this is. If I use a piece of cloth, it's gonna take me a week, so. So yeah, there was not a chance that this was gonna work. It would have taken me probably about 2000 years to do it by hand like this. So I had to come up with something else. And this stinks a little bit like ammonia. Air sander was definitely the way to go and it still took quite a long time but way faster than I could have done it by hand. Anyhow, this is probably a good time to say a huge thank you to all of you beautiful people for supporting my channel and helping to keep the lights on at the shop and buying snacks for my cats. Well, not my cats actually. And if you do want to support me, you can check out the links in the description. You can buy me a coffee via Buy Me a Coffee, hit the super thanks button or check out my Amazon wishlist link. As always, really appreciate it and thank you so much. One eternity later. Wow, <laughs> I've never in my life polished that much. And this was just so big and it just took so much time also there were some dents in it because this is metal so I just used the hammer to flatten them and um, it worked this is gonna get messy so I've moved I've moved outside but the middle bit is looking good actually I'm pretty happy this is gonna be the most difficult hard to clean. I can't use my sander on it. So I'm gonna try these. I believe people actually call this pie crust top and I think those little things that I'm working on right now that's why and I think there were 50 or 50 something of them <laughs> and it just took so much time and I can't even imagine if I had to do it by hand, even this way that I'm doing it, it took a long time. But I guess that's what makes it fun. And those little brush thingies that I'm using, I used every single one that I had, <laughs> so I need to get some more. But yeah, if you're ever gonna do anything like this, Barkeeper's Friend is definitely the way to go. It's much better than Brasso if you're working with brass that's in a really bad shape. I'm gonna rinse this because I think it's gonna be the easiest. You ready? This is where we are after rinsing. Definitely an improvement. Still have a little bit of work, but it looks like I can save it. That was a lot of work. <laughs> but I'm pretty happy and excited because it's um I can already see that um it's gonna look great. I just need to do all this and the bottom, but the bottom is going to be easy, so am I going to show it to you?
if I had to do what I'm doing right now by hand, <laughs> I can't even imagine how long that would have taken. Six and a half hours later. I did 320, I'm doing 400 now, and I'm gonna go all the way to 800. And yes, I was pretty happy with how it was looking, but not quite happy. And I decided to do a bit more sanding with much higher grit. So I went all the way to 800 and it was looking pretty nice. So I'm done sanding and I think I'm just gonna do one more round of Barkeeper's Friend. You can still see some very fine scratches from the same paper. And I think this will be just fine. And I remember that I had this super cheap car polisher that I bought for my old car when I bought it and never really used it, so it was actually perfect for this application. Alright, I'll give it a rinse and I think I'm done. I think it's as good as it's gonna get. Look at this. I've decided I'm actually not going to polish the bottom. I'm just cleaning it with white spirit. I decided that there was no point of polishing the bottom because it was just patina and there was nothing wrong with it so I just gave it a clean and it was fine and the way it was. All right, I'm going to tape off the ends so I don't get any finish on them. I'm gonna try all these dark. This is what it looks like. And this is 800 grit. So after all the wood grain matching and everything that I did, this is the final result of the repair. I'm very pleased with it and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check out the project that I picked for Anders, I'll link it in the description and in the end screen. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed it, give it a like, comment and subscribe and enjoy the final result. See you in the next video. Thank <music> you.